Hey everyone, this is the Children's Corner Pattern Mary D. Now this is the smock version. I also have a video on the non-smock version that I'll link below. And if you didn't know, Mary D was recently revised this past October 2016, somewhere around there, and I will link where I got mine down below. So to begin, you'll cut out two bodice front pieces on the fold. You'll have one full-size bodice piece, and that will be used as the lining, and then you'll have a short bodice piece, and that'll be used as a dress front, and it'll be attached to the smocking section and then cut out four back bodice pieces and two of these will be used as a lining and then two of them will be used as the dress and then cut out the skirt now if your fabric rips you're definitely going to want to rip it so as you see I measure the length given by the pattern pieces and then I cut a slit where that measurement is on my fabric so I can rip it and then I cut off the selvage edge before measuring the width and using the same rotary straight edge setup to cut that off. I repeat the same concept to cut out and you'll have one big piece of fabric for the skirt front which is pattern piece number four and then you'll have two smaller pieces for the skirt back which is pattern piece number six. Also, if you're working with some kind of stripe or design that is matching up, be cautious of that as you cut out your skirts so the design will come together when you sew your side seams. In my case, I'm using this gingham and I want the rows to line up both vertically and horizontally. So if you're not into all of that, don't choose the gingham because it's kind of a headache. So also keep in mind that you have a half inch seam allowance to consider when lining up your rows if you are using some kind of fabric that warrants this attention. Anywho, regardless, you'll pleat up the front of the skirt and if you're using gingham you may want to consider pleating this up by hand since it looks so much better than on a pleater <laughs> and I have a video tutorial on how to do this that I'll link below. Now take the blocking pattern piece number seven in my case since I'm doing the six month size and block your skirt front. I did this using freezer paper and I have a detailed video on how to block with this method. It is super easy and I'm sure you will love it because I am all about this method. It is the easiest way I've ever seen to block smocking. I know I wasn't able to find freezer paper in my local grocery store so I bought it on Amazon instead and I will leave a link below that will give a kickback to the channel. And I thank you. <laughs> now this step is optional, but if you have lightweight fabric, you may want to consider interfacing one of the pieces. When I made the non-smock version using this gorgeous lightweight dotted Swiss, I interfaced the front bodice piece as well as the back pieces using baby interfacing, and I will link that down below. But this gingham has more weight, and I didn't feel the need to interface it, so that's just an FYI for all y'all. Now if you want to put some piping in, do that now before attaching the skirt to the bodice. It's an optional step. Obviously, I made some piping from the same gingham fabric using some cording and I'll link below where you can buy cording if you like to make custom piping as well. I cut my piping to the seam allowance of a half inch so it's easy to match up and sew. I sewed the piping onto the bottom sections of the bodice front before attaching to the skirt. And Audrey was helping me at this point. <laughs> Some days she just wants to be held, which is plenty fine by me, so we end up sewing together. Then I line up the pleated skirt front piece with to the bodice piece with right sides together. Take that to your machine and stitch it in place. And I sew with the bodice side up so I can use those previous stitches from attaching the piping to know where to sew. I sewed right on top of these stitches. If you have something with stripes or whatnot, you may want to look over your seam to make sure the design is lined up nicely before removing the freezer paper, and this will be the opportunity to fix any deviations. Before you remove the freezer paper, you can zigzag around the armholes and cut that area. Again, go to my blocking video for a better explanation. Before you can put the skirt back to the bodice back, you'll have to finish one edge of the skirt first. You'll take the edge that will be overlapping in the back of the dress and turn it about a quarter inch and then stitch along that and then again turn it about an inch and iron that in place. Then you can sew two rows of gathered stitches onto each skirt back sections. The idea is that the stitches will go in between these two rows of gather stitches. So now you can gather the skirt section up to fit the back bodice sections. Again, I add piping to the skirt back pieces before attaching them to the bodice back pieces. Again, piping is an optional step. I extended the piping past the center back sections of the skirt so it could be folded under and finished neatly. 
Once you're done sewing the piping, give it a quick ironing. And again, I sewed the back pieces together by using the stitches from the attaching the piping as a guideline. If you didn't attach piping, no worries, joining these pieces is easier for you. Just try to maintain a constant half inch seam allowance. Now one thing to note about sewing this back skirt to the back bodice is that you're going to have about a half inch of the bodice back overhanging the skirt. And this is overlapping the finished edge of the skirt. I hope all of that is making sense. Basically the skirt edge is already finished and you're leaving the overlap of the bodice back so you have some seam allowance to sew into and finish the bodice edge. And now if this is not making sense, just keep watching. I promise I will connect the dots for you later on in the video. <laughs> So once you're done sewing the back pieces together, then you can attach the front pieces to the back pieces at the shoulder seams. I just use regular seams, half inch seam allowance, and join your lining pieces at the shoulder seams too. Then I folded the back bottom edge of your lining up about a half inch and ironed that in place. Now this is going to provide a way to enclose the skirt seam later on. So now pin the lining to the bodice with the right sides together. Now I started to pin at the shoulder seams. So you're going to sew from one underarm to the other, but not down the side of that dress. Then you'll sew from one back edge of the bodice all the way around to the other edge. And this is where that half inch overlap that I was talking about earlier is coming into play. You'll want to sew as collinear to the finished skirt edge as possible so the two sections are flush. And you can put your needle down and turn that corner when you sew up to it. So at this point, you'll have the sides open and the backs together. You can clip the corner at the back sections and clip the curves around the armholes and neckline. Then you'll pull the back sections through and this will turn the right sides out and finish the armhole area as well as the neckline all in one fell swoop. It's very, very clever, right? <laughs> Now this is an optional set, but I decided to understitch this neckline area as much as I could to help with the smocking. It's easy for block smocking like this to look like a hot mess, and I think understitching helps keep it tidy. If you decide to do this, just go as far as you can. You won't be able to go all the way around since the armhole straps will get in the way, but something is better than nothing in my opinion. Now take a good iron into the bodice back area. It will look like a hot mess until you iron it and everything will eventually lay into place. And you can use your scissors to push the corners out so they form a nice pretty point. So now you're going to sew the side seams together. You'll pull the lining away from the bodice area, keeping the fold edge intact on the lining. You can see here both sides are together with the folded edge of the lining still folded over. Then I took this over to my machine and I sewed it using French seams. And I have a detailed video on how to do French seams that I'll link below. Once you iron that flat, you can move on to the hem of the dress. I ironed about a half inch up all the way around the dress. And instead of measuring, I was able to use the gingham design as to guide me. Then I folded and pinned up three inches all the way around. And then I sewed the hem line in place by hand. And then I finished the garment using fake snap button combo. <laughs> hey, this is my favorite way to close garments at this age. And then the dress was complete after I whip stitched the line down and did the smocking. So here is 6 month Audrey in the 6 month size in a Mary D. Her chest measurement is 15 and a half inches and waist is 16 inches. And now this is a bit loose on her. She is taller for her age and average weight. So that combination leaves you with a thinner baby. Of course, I think she's perfect. But what I'm trying to say is I think the sizing on the pattern is pretty good. Audrey's just on the thinner side of life. So if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. As always, I appreciate y'all for watching and I hope to catch y'all next time.